Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. There's a couple of very interesting stories that are floating around the internet at the moment. And the first that I really want to discuss with you guys is one that possibly could show us the future of PC gaming, at least how Nvidia sees it. So before we get further into this, I'll just give you guys a quick reminder. Obviously, NVIDIA and the ARM, you know, kind of deal have been, you know, one of those things that have been going on for a while, whether NVIDIA will eventually be able to purchase ARM or not. But there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the industry right now. Intel getting into graphics is extremely important. And we also, of course, have AMD not only producing high-performance CPUs, but they're also now very competitive to NVIDIA in GPUs. And I want to stop right there so you can have that percolate in your mind for a little bit. And I, I want to discuss this press release that NVIDIA have, well, um, released. And this is also in conjunction with a couple of uh, demos. So um, the videos are from the GDC 2021 uh, kind of archive, so I'll leave a link to it in the video description. So we have a couple of demos. The first is Wolfenstein, Young Blood, and the second is the Bistro. And I'm going to read this quote for Baton. Uh, this is from the press release. RTX has redefined the industry. We're now investing in new platforms where we can deploy more advanced graphics so gamers have a choice. The performance and energy efficiency of ARM CPUs with NVIDIA technologies can open an entirely new class of PC. And we also have NVIDIA working alongside MediaTek, who have provided the ARM-based processor with this particular configuration. So the RTX 3060 is running alongside an MediaTek Companio, I believe that's how you pronounce it, 1200 ARM processor. You can do a quick Google if you want to have a lot more information on how the specifications of this actually kind of, uh, you know, stack up, if you will. But we'll plonk it on screen anyway. And again, this is an extremely energy efficient architecture for obvious reasons. And well, yeah, and basically all of the game is running completely and utterly ray traced. And another particularly interesting part of this quote, the potential for RTX on ARM, GeForce RTX technology, including GPU accelerated ray tracing, DLSS and other AI powered innovations have made a significant uh, impact in real time graphics since their introduction in 2018. The world's leading publishers have used RTX technology and then obviously they wheel out a ton of games. And basically speaking, Wolfenstein Youngblood is the first RTX PC game to have shown an ARM-based system, a testament to the flexibility, power and optimized nature of the id tech engine. And this is a quote from Machine Games. So basically speaking, there has been a lot of discussion, of course, of NVIDIA purchasing ARM that I mentioned a moment ago. And I don't think that we're going to see the ousting of x86 or anything like that. But you might recall that one of my more recent exclusives, I was discussing how Intel want to really focus on mobile for their discrete GPUs. Now, this is not to say that they're not going to come to the desktop. In fact, I'm somewhat hearing that we may see models come to the desktop possibly a little bit earlier than what I'd originally anticipated. But either way, the vast majority of Intel's focus, at least initially, is going to be on the mobile. And there are a lot of reasons behind this, but in business, it makes an awful lot of sense for Intel to be able to sell CPU, GPU, and all of the internal components basically to Acer or whatever laptop manufacturer who wants to basically buy it. They can essentially buy the kit just to keep things in very simple verbiage. And AMD too can do much the same. So this essentially means that PAPA could be shut out from this particular thing. Now, obviously, Intel and AMD can still have their processors paired, let's say, with an RTX 40 mobile or whatever is going to be current at the time. That's absolutely no problem. But it's hard to deny that Intel and I assume AMD as well will do any and everything in their power to incentivize basically an A and A configuration or an I and I configuration. For example, with AMD, you can have some really advanced smart shift technology. And we know, of course, that that's quite uh, powerful and quite flexible. So I think for NVIDIA, 
having this type of platform makes an awful lot of sense. And this is certainly, in my personal opinion, this is only kind of the first step. And I have mentioned some of this before in like how NVIDIA are going to be responding to this. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description, but I've discussed it a couple of times recently anyway. So if you're a regular viewer, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. I don't want to go too much over old ground here. But it's really interesting to me that we're starting to see this. And again, it matches, you know, what I've been hearing. One of my uh, kind of earlier NVIDIA exclusives was that NVIDIA have been working on ARM-based um, hardware with an RTX uh, mobile GPU. And basically, they were testing various configurations. And, you know, I was pretty confident on in that news, to be honest with you, because I had the information backed up by a couple of different sources. And at the end of the day, this is certainly not um, NVIDIA going to just abandon x86. And they're still going to definitely want to sell you you know, RTX 30, RTX 40, RTX 50, or whatever they end up branding those cards on the desktop and in mobile. However, Papa definitely wants to offer other options. And it's going to be very interesting to me across a myriad of different markets, across the entire TAM, which is available to NVIDIA. So, of course, that's mobile, that's desktop, that's high performance, you know, servers and everything in between, how all of this is going to kind of just unfold. Again, I, I would be really interested to see what the state of affairs looks like, let's say in 2023, 2024 in particular. And now from one very interesting aspect of PC gaming to a totally different one, and this is Microsoft and direct storage. So Microsoft have already announced direct storage for the um, you know PC, and of course it is going to be exclusive to the Windows ecosystem. So basically Linux equals no, unless of course there's a way of kind of emulating that on uh, Linux, which I won't get into here. But one of the things that kind of raised a few eyebrows is that it's only going to be for Windows 11. However, Microsoft seems to have walked back on this as now they have released a developer preview. And as you probably guessed at this point, yup, that's right, it does work on Windows 10. And this has actually been confirmed by a program manager over at Microsoft. So basically, directs uh, storage features can be broken down into a couple of different categories. The first is the programming model, which provides DirectX 12 style batch submission slash completion patterns, basically for IO request. GPU decompression, and we'll get more into that one in just a moment. And then finally, storage stack optimization. On Windows 11, this consists of upgraded OS storage stack. And on Windows 10, games still benefit from the more efficient use of the legacy OS storage stack. So I'm guessing by this statement, although technically speaking it will work on Windows 10, it does seem like it will be more efficient, faster on Windows 11. And basically, um, getting back to the decompression side of the equation, so a lot of Games obviously have quite high resolution textured assets and a ton of the data in modern ga day games is actually, well, graphical related. So yes, of course, audio and other such things do obviously take space on your SSD, but the vast majority of a lot of games now, you know, it's graphical assets. So basically Microsoft's model is no longer have the CPU decompress GPU textures instead rather than the uh, data be co copied to the memory of your PC, and then the CPU decompresses it, and then it sends it over the PCIe, um, uh, PCIe bus to the GPU. What now happens is basically the data is sent directly to the GPU, so it's basically reading and writing directly from the um, from the SSD, and then the GPU can decompress it. And this does have a plethora of benefits, not least of which that you're not taking up as much bandwidth on the PCIe bus because the data is still com uh, compressed, but also that the uh, GPU itself can decompress things much faster and much more efficient compared to even, let's say, a 16-core 5950X, which is still really, really fast, but it's still going to eat up a ton of CPU cores and 
in terms of energy efficiency alone, it's nowhere near as good. So basically speaking, this is like an entirely different paradigm and Microsoft are um, obviously kind of setting things up. In my personal opinion, and just reading between the lines of what Microsoft said in, I believe it was the Build conference I covered this. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I honestly don't remember. But um, basically, you know, it was kind of like heavily implied the GPUs of the future may actually have custom blocks to decompress this rather than it being run on the shaders. But again, it, because they're not stating things, you know, implicitly, it's very difficult to be 100%. And one final thing that I want to cover today, and this is actually something really cool from AMD slash PS5. A developer has actually officially confirmed the first title on the PS5, which actually uses FSR, aka AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, which obviously is AMD's own upsampling technology that I've discussed about 2 billion trillion times at this point, so I won't go into how it works. But obviously, because it is platform agnostic, well, it has a ton of benefits. So now um, it's now been confirmed by the developers of the game, according to the patch notes anyway, that yes, the PS5 version now has AMD FSR 1.0. And this is also in com combination with TAAU hybrid upscaling. So this is really cool. It's nice to actually see that we have a developer that's confirming this is working on the PS5. Although at this point we knew it was going to work on the system anyway, thanks to multiple confirmations and stuff like that. But still, it'll be interesting to actually test this out. Um, apparently the combination of upscaling methods is now going to be the default. So again, it would be interesting to do some nice uh, image comparisons between the two. Uh, I haven't really checked this game out much myself. I don't really know much about it, so I don't know necessarily if I'll like try it out on the PS5 or anything like that. But still, it's pretty cool. Um, and I think that's just about it for this video. Apologies for not being on camera, but I'm currently finishing a couple of projects. And also, it's like 2 billion degrees in here. So, um, yeah, I kind of just decided to do audio only for today. But uh, normal service should resume in the next couple of days, hopefully tomorrow. But that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do, leave a likey on the video. And also, let me know down below, what do you personally think of NVIDIA and, you know, this new direction with ARM? How do you think it's going to impact things? It's very curious. With that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.